variation. Direct variation is often best understood in the context of a real-world application. So we're going to be thinking about Sweet Treats, which is a store selling candy in bulk. They usually sell three times as many pounds of jelly beans as gumdrops. If we think about writing an equation to match this situation, where g is equal to the number of pounds of gumdrops sold, and j is equal to the number of pounds of jelly beans sold, most students will come up with either j equals 3 times g or g equals 3 times j. If you're not quite sure which one is correct and which one is incorrect, it's always best to map out some data or ordered pairs in an input-output table. So we can start with uh, jelly beans is our independent variable and gumdrops is our dependent variable. Since we know that we want more jelly beans than gumdrops, we see that one pound of jelly beans would equal only a third of a pound of gumdrops. And an appropriate equation in this situation might be g is equal to one-third j. If, on the other hand, I change my I.O. table such that g is now the independent or input variable and j is the dependent or output variable, it would change the way things look and my equation would also change. It's an inverse of the other equation. This one is j equals 3 times g. So we can see that when we were thinking that the first one here is correct and the second one would not quite work. Now I want us to consider another candy store called Confections, which specializes in making their own gumdrops. Because their gumdrops are so good, they sell twice as many pounds of gumdrops as jelly beans. When I think about this situation, in this case, gumdrops, or the number of pounds of gumdrops, is always larger, twice as large as the number of pounds of jelly beans. So the appropriate equation here would be j is equal to one-half times g. Now, we also want to think about another situation um, where the equation would look a little different. Suppose that Sweet Treats would like to run a Halloween promotion to, um, in, to encourage customers to come in and buy their Halloween candy at their store. So every Saturday in the month of October, they're giving away a pound of orange and black jelly beans to the first customer who comes in and spends at least $25. They still, um, they still can expect that they will sell three times as many jelly beans as gumdrops, but now they're going to actually give away four extra pounds of jelly beans in the month. And so this equation might be modeled as the number of pounds of jelly beans is equal to three times the number of pounds of gumdrops plus four extra pounds of jelly beans. So when I think about my three equations, I want to make ratios out of the ordered pairs, where I put the y value of the ordered pair in the numerator and the x value into the denominator. So therefore, my j is over g. Now that one of the ordered pairs in my first equation, j is equal to 3 times g, was the ordered pair 1 comma 3, which is now represented by 3 over 1 as a ratio. If I do the same with the other ordered pairs, I can see that all of these ratios are equivalent and equal to 3. For another equation, this was the one for confections, where j was equal to 1 half times g, I still get a series of equivalent ratios that are all equal to 1 half. Finally, in my Halloween special situation, where j is equal to 3 times g plus 4, I have a series of ratios that are actually not equal to each other. For instance, 7 is not equal to 5, which is not equal to 4 and 1 third, which is not equal to 4. So the ratios that don't belong are for this last equation. So we need to think about what is common about the first two. Well, the thing that's common is they have no y-intercept added to their equation, and the slope becomes the constant of variation. So this happens when these ratios of y compared to x are equivalent. We get the constant of variation, and we can see that this represents direct variation or that the ratios are directly proportional to one another. 
Another way to look at this besides ratios is to think about how, what these lines would look like on a coordinate plane. The first equation, j equals 3 times g, would look like this, assuming that the x-axis is the independent variable g for number of pounds of gumdrops, and the y-axis is a dependent variable j for number of pounds of jelly beans. The next equation, which was j equals 1 half of g, would be graphed in this fashion. As you can see, they definitely do not share the same slope, but they do share the same y-intercept of 0, or the origin. The last equation, j equals 3g plus 4, does not pass through the origin, but rather the y-intercept starts at 4. Because the slope is the same as the original equation, this is parallel, but does not represent direct variation, as the entire line has been translated up the y-axis by 4 units. So in summary, direct variation is a result of data which varies in a proportional manner.